music has become a huge part of dining. When I found that a customer can have such a great time because of a song, it flipped the script. I almost base restaurants on the sound. Do I want to have it in a boisterous atmosphere or do I want to have it in an elegant setting? It's just kind of starts as a seed and then throwing ideas back and forth and just kind of evolves. You have to kind of fill in all those blanks and kind of take into consideration how high these ceilings are and how the music has to kind of fill it, but the beats can't get lost in here. Or two heavy guitars, too heavy. like shrill, lots guitar, of horns. Guitar solos probably won't work in here. What we bring to the table is a point of view and a level of taste mm -hmm. and just knowledge. And you know, you, you can talk to someone about your water or your bathroom toiletries, but there's no one to call about your music. We provide playlists for restaurants, hotels, and retail. We don't have an algorithm like Pandora. It's literally human beings looking at your playlist, picking what makes sense, what works with other genres. Technology with a human touch. For sure. I mean, here we are at Clock Tower. It's a very elegant restaurant. We've worked with Steven Starr for over 10 years. Uh, I used to work at Morimoto, actually, in Chelsea. Oh, okay. so I think he has an incredible formula for success and for nightlife and restaurants, and he's achieved that across the board. And he, having been in music himself as a promoter in, in Philly years ago, always kind of comes to the table with a good idea as to what he's looking for. Right. Some clients are more involved than others. Exactly. Some people have a better working language and knowledge of music. Other times people are not that well-versed. They're looking to us to right. help them define what that should be. Whether it's a hotel, whether it's a restaurant or retail, it really runs the gamut as far as who we work with. Mm -hmm. When I came in at 8 and then I walked into like the billiard room and I saw what was going on and saw the photos on the wall of Andy Warhol and Grace Jones and classic kind of New York characters hanging out. I take all that in and I said, the visual reminders are here so now this gives me freedom to think in terms of what people are actually seeing and then kind of reacting to that with the music. So at the Clock Tower, what would be like the top five quintessential songs here? It kind of starts out with jazz, there's some French in there, mm -hmm. uh, Coleman Hawkins, uh, Eartha Kitt. And then we'll kind of go into in the afternoon some lighter rock and classics, newer stuff by like the A La La's or Black Keys Tighten Up. But you'll also hear Gloria Jones' Tainted Love, which is the original version. So it's very hands-on and you have to have a vision. When you walk through here for the first time, I think you kind of had an idea immediately and then you feel like, okay, what does this place need? So this building originally was the MetLife building mm -hmm. and this room, I think, originally was the CEO's office. Here, they have wood floors. There's a lot of like softer material as far as the banquettes and the chairs. Mm -hmm. They did a good job installing the sound system and they have good coverage. And we also look for certain types of music travels better in certain spaces. That's a perfect example of Rolling Stone. Sticky Fingers is a great sounding record. Regardless of whether you think the songs are well written or not, like the way it's recorded just sounds great. And it fills a room really well. You guys are actually into music. No, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all music people. He still DJs. I came up in hospitality at Republic, Bond Street, went to open the Soho Grand Hotel, and you know, music is always a part of that. And I, being a music lover and DJ myself was always programming the music in those spaces. I mean, I worked at Other Music, which was a quintessential indie rock, uh, or just independent record stores mm -hmm. in New York and really the nation for 11 years from 1997 to 2008. It was a tastemaker shop. It was a place where you know, people who were really into music kind of went to find, to get your fix. And Alec used to be there quite sure. a bit. And we immediately started like working together. So. Interesting. 12 years ago when I started, I was making mixed playlists on a CD. Uh, now we have all the way up to Spotify, Pandora. I use it sometimes for 10 hours a day and I, know, I can tell you what song is next. Who chooses the songs? It really is a collaborative effort between client and us. If you want to like get super specific like about your aesthetic and the music and you want to get kind of like deep and obscure with it, then there's people on staff who can kind of mine your head and mm -hmm. kind of come up with like a concept that works for you. But we, we shoot for 
five days worth of music without any repeats. That's what we try to shoot for so the staff doesn't go crazy, and any regulars as well. You know what's funny is that the staff goes crazy, which is actually a huge problem, so I, I, I admire that the staff gets uh, not to sing the same song. There's also like a, a comfort level to a customer coming in and knowing that when they come here there's going to be a certain sort of aesthetic, a certain song that you're going to hear, and they, that's kind of like what they want. If you like that episode and you want to see more Shokanim, click here. Oh my god, anything. Just people are going to go nuts. Like, what is that? I'm like, oh, it's a secret fruit that I, I make.